Welcome to the first in the Freak Labs Chibi Arduino wireless tutorial series. These tutorials are made to get you up to speed in transmitting wireless data quickly using Arduino and the Chibi Arduino software. The purpose of this first lab is to make sure our hardware is okay, make sure we can establish communications between our devices, learn how to transmit to another device, and learn how to receive data coming into our device. Let's get started. The hardware we'll be using is the Freak Duino 900 and the Freak USB 900. These are low-cost wireless 900 megahertz devices produced by Freak Labs and designed for people just getting into wireless communications with Arduino. Before we get into the code, it might be good to go over uh, some of the functions and constructs that we'll be using. We're going to start with the transmit side first because generally that's easier. Um, initially, we're going to uh, bring in the Chibi Arduino library by using pound include chibi.h. When we transmit data, we always transmit it in the form of byte arrays. And I usually use uh, byte arrays of about 100 bytes, and that's because that's the payload length. We'll also be initializing the Chibi Arduino stack using the chibi init function, and that is only used once in the setup, and we'll initialize the complete stack. And when we transmit, then we use uh, the function chibi.tx. And when we do that, we send the address, then the data, the data, the byte array that we created, and the length of the uh, the length of the array, or the amount of bytes that we're going to send. So here we are in the Arduino IDE. If you followed the previous tutorial, then you should have everything installed and ready to go. When you program wireless devices, you have to get used to writing two sets of code: one for transmit and one for receive. So uh, let's open up uh, another window. And so now we have our transmit and receive windows. Um, I'm going to save the transmit window and then uh, and call it hello wireless world TX. And after that, then I'm going to save the receive window and call it hello wireless world RX. Let's start by working on the transmit side of the code first. At the top of the code, we're going to bring in our Chibi Arduino library by typing in pound include chibi.h. Then we're going to define our destination address by setting a pound define and setting that destination address to 0xFFFF. That's the default broadcast address for the protocol that we're going to be using. When I say broadcast address, I mean that every device will be able to receive this packet. This is as opposed to a unicast address, like so if I sent it to address 3, then only d a device with the address of 3 will be able to receive that. When I send it to an address of 0x FFFF, by default, all devices can receive this packet. Now I'm going to declare a byte array, and this byte array is going to carry our message. So our message is going to be, hello, wireless world. Once we have that, then we need to start working on our setup code. And I'm just going to do some minor formatting here. You don't need to do it, but this is just how I like to format my code. If you remember, then the setup code will only run once for Arduino. So it runs once at the very beginning, and it's where you initialize everything. After that, then all the work goes in the loop code where it will run forever. So in the setup code, we're going to just type chibi init, and that's the initialization function for the chibi Arduino wireless stack. That's all you need to do to get it started. Now let's move to the loop code. And so again, some minor formatting. And we're going to transmit our data here. So to transmit in the Chibi Arduino stack, then we just use the Chibi TX function. And you, when you call that function, then you just input the destination address, the message, which is a byte array. And we have to uh, specify the length of the byte array that we'll be sending, or the number of bytes that we'll be sending. So in this case, we're going to use the size of function. And the size of function makes things a lot easier because it'll automatically calculate how many bytes of data are inside that array. So now we just set a delay of about 500 milliseconds and we should be good to go. The reason for the delay is just so that we don't pound the receiver with uh, constant data transmissions. So once we have that, then we're going to compile the sketch just to make sure that everything is okay. So this will turn up any syntax errors or anything that could derail our, uh, our upload. So here you can see that uh, our code 
used about 3.3K of flash memory out of 32K and uh, slightly under 500 bytes of RAM out of uh, 2 kilobytes of RAM. So it's actually a pretty uh, lean wireless protocol stack. Now we're going to move on to the receive side of the code. We have to do a few more steps than the transmit side, but it's not too bad. Um, again, we have to bring in the Chibi Arduino library using the pound include chibi.h. And then after that, uh, we want to first test if we receive data. And we use the chibi data received function to do that. And that will return true if data has come in. If data has come in, then we use chibi get data to, uh, to retrieve the data. And that function re will return the length or the amount of bytes in our byte array. That's uh, actual data. And then we're also going to use the chibi get rssi function. And rssi is the received signal strength indicator. That's the signal strength of the packet that came in. And that will tell us how strong our uh, wireless signal is. So let's start with the receive side now. So again, we're going to include our chibi Arduino library by typing pound include chibi.h. And then we're going to uh, instantiate our byte array, which is uh, we're going to set at 100 bytes. The reason why we're using 100 bytes is because that's the maximum payload size for the wireless protocol that we're using. Because of that, we're guaranteed that the received data will never overflow our data buffer. And in setup, along with chibi init, we're also going to add serial.begin because we're going to print out the message that we want. So now to the loop function, we need to call the function chibi data received because that's the test that we're going to check to see if data has come in. So if it returns true, that means that there's new data and that we can get that data. Once we know that there's new data available, then we need to get that data. So first we're going to start by declaring two variables, length and RSSI. RSSI is the received signal strength indicator. And that tells the signal strength of the data packet that just came in. It's a very useful uh, number. Um, also, we want to know what the length is because that's because a lot of times we need to understand the length in order to figure out how to parse the data. So, in order to get the data, we call the chibi get data function and pass in our data buffer. And the get data function will automatically populate the data buffer with whatever data was received, and then it'll return the length value. So once we have the length, in this case it's optional, but I want to get the RSSI, that's the signal strength. Um, and we're going to use that later on. So to get the signal strength, then we call the chibi get RSSI function. So this next step is a bit strange. We have to check to see if we received a length of zero on our incoming packet. And if that happens, then what that indicates is that it's a uh, duplicate packet. So this is part of the wireless software that I wrote. And in some cases, especially when you're on the boundaries of reception, you may get duplicate packets coming in. That's because like, you won't receive the acknowledge on the far end, and so they'll keep on sending packets to you. When you have a duplicate packet, in this case, we want to discard it. Uh, sometimes we, we may want to process it, but in this case, we'll just want to discard it. After that, then we do a serial.print line and print out whatever we just received on our incoming data and that should be hello wireless world. We do have to do a typecast to a character type in order to use the serial.println function from the Arduino library and that's because um, they can't operate on uh, the byte data type. So once that's done then we compile our code, upload it, and we should be uh, ready to go. Once we do that, then uh, we open up our serial monitor and check to see if we're receiving our Hello Wireless World signals, and we are. Excellent. We can actually improve the code by not only printing out whatever we received from our incoming data, but also printing out the signal strength or the RSSI that we picked up from that also. So remember we got the RSSI earlier, and so all we really need to do is just add a few more serial print statements in order to uh, print that out. And once again, uh, we compile the sketch uh, to make sure that everything is okay.
Now we're able to capture the message that we're transmitting and also the receive signal strength indicator. And that's going to be really important because we could use that to actually check out how our uh, signal strength varies uh, as we move around some area. So a nice thing about the Freakduino is that you can uh, unplug it and just operate it via batteries. And so we can, we can unplug it and take it mobile and uh, just transmit from different locations. Um, we're logging all the data onto the screen and so onto the screencast. So this is actually how I do site surveys where I can la log the signal strength based on where I'm going and then I can see uh, which areas might be uh, dead spots. Yeah. As we walk around saying, oh, there's my girlfriend. Um, so this is actually a hacker farm. This is uh, where I live and do a lot of my designs uh, when I'm in Japan. So it's quite a nice place. It's actually really beautiful and there's a lot of uh, beautiful greenery around. Walking around, that's where we have our trash cans that they pick up every uh, three days. It's like walking next to my neighbor's property and then right now we're outside the lab just checking things out and so you see we do get some attenuation because the uh, the lab walls are made out of uh, sheet metal and here we are coming back into the lab and coming in and back home and so we're getting a relatively strong signal strength here because we're right next to the receiver and uh, that's actually kind of a nice thing about being battery operated is that you can get mobile so that's it for this wireless tutorial on using the Chibi Arduino stack with the Freakduino. Um, if you're interested in the hardware, you can pick it up at www.freaklabstore.com. For this tutorial, we use the Freakduino 900 and the Freak USB 900. And both of those are 900 megahertz wireless boards that are uh, Arduino compatible. Thanks a lot for listening.